Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so the other fight on the card that was really, really entertaining and it delivered in a great way was the WBA final eliminator for the Bantamweight division. And it had two Puerto Rican fighters. You know, you had Jonathan Rodriguez from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, training out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and you had Antonio Vargas out of Orlando, Florida. You know, two two fighters of Puerto Rican descent with a very, very similar background in the sport. They both were highly touted coming uh, prospects. Antonio Vargas more so than Jonathan Rodriguez. Rodriguez is more of a club fighter, but um, you know, Vargas has been knocked out. Rodriguez has been knocked out. They both had to spend some years rebuilding themselves back up to this point. So this fight in a sense, was a big watershed moment, a big pivotal moment in the career of both men. And this was a fight that didn't disappoint because um, the result of the fight was Antonio Vargas getting a seventh round stoppage. But the route in which we took to get to that point was crazy because early on in the first round, Jonathan Rodriguez dropped the Vargas with the, uh, with the right hand. And it looked like, you know, Rodriguez, who we all know, knocked out Kalia Fayan around it looked like he might have had a bit of a chance to do the same thing in the first round and um he didn't but um not too long after that Vargas winds up getting a knocked on of his own and he drops Rodriguez and as I'm watching the fight the guy that looked like the more physically stronger guy was Antonio Vargas the guy that looked like he had a better more like technical base was Vargas Rodriguez was doing good things too but Rodriguez he was being more of the headhunter. He was trying to be more of the counter puncher and punch in between the shots of Vargas. Vargas, I thought, was mixing his attack up a little bit more. And that's why I think, you know, later on he got the stoppage. But what was crazy was before we even got to the stoppage, after Vargas dropped Rodriguez, he actually wound up hitting him with a big old uppercut that, you know, that 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 um that took place after the knockdown and left a big you know, black eye on uh, Rodriguez. So the referee actually wound up taking two points. He, he uh, Vargas got deducted two points, and it was a real, real uh, big moment in the fight. And then eventually, as the fight went along, Vargas got the stoppage, and um, just a really good fight. I mean, uh, a fight that really delivered in a major way. And now you look at Antonio Vargas, he is now the WBA mandatory challenger for Takuma Inoue who just won this weekend in sensational fashion against former world champion Joe Ancaja. So, you know, respect to Jonathan Rodriguez. I mean, I mean, I hope he comes back. I think there's still more in his career he has to learn. Um, I think he was just, he was too much of a headhunter in this fight. And I think Jonathan Rodriguez, just my opinion, I think he needs to try to, you know, definitely vary that attack to the body a bit more. Because I feel like if he would have went to the body a bit more, with his kind of punch power and his sharpness, he might have he might have really gotten Vargas out of there because I think he was a naturally stronger puncher. He just his punches were a little more repetitive than what Vargas was doing, so that's why things went and played out how they played out. But uh, nonetheless, a great fight that really delivered in um, respect to both men. But Vargas versus Takuma Inoue, let's break that fight down because Takuma Inoue showed his last in, in a fight against um, Ancas that he's capable of staying in the pocket. We know Takuma Inoue, if he's not anything else, he's a very good mid-range boxer. Um, he's okay from the outside. He's improved on the inside, but really he's his bread and butter is the right hand from mid-range. That's that's what he showed in his career when he beat Solis for the title. That's what he showed when he, even in, in a loss and a good effort against Nodino Bali. And it's what he also showed um, in his last fight against Nkaha. So I think Vargas is going to get a chance in that fight to fight at the range he wants the most. I don't think Takuma Inoue is as explosive of a counter puncher as a guy like Jonathan Rodriguez. So I don't think that he's gonna be really hurt in that fight as much as he was in this fight. And I think this fight actually did a great job of preparing him for that fight. Um, for Takuma Inoue, I think this is a fight where um, I don't think he'll be I don't think it'll be in his best interest to stay in the pocket as much. But, you know, I thought that when he fought in, in Kaos and he 
and he and he put me wrong there. So maybe, maybe in a way, um, is is he developing and evolving, and maybe it is in his best interest to stay, to stay in the pocket. But either way, it's a great fight for the bantamweight division. I hope um, if Takuma can't get the get the unification fight with the guy with the guys like Maloney or Manny Rodriguez and these kind of guys, and I hope that um, Antonio Vargas gets a shot because you know he's earned the shot. He's done a great job rebuilding himself, and he, and he beat a he beat a very very hungry, determined challenger in uh, Jonathan Rodriguez. Jonathan Rodriguez is a good fighter. I think Jonathan Rodriguez could beat a lot of guys in the top fifteen, and um, evidence of that could be seen in the Cali fight fight based on what he did to him. So um, you know, really good fight. Shout out to the fighting fight of Orlando Antonio Vargas. I mean, I know. I know um, I've been knowing about Antonio Vargas for some years. I mean, I never really talked about him, but I, I know that name for years. And now over the last couple months, I've gotten really familiar with him because, um, you know, I used to always see people, people in the amateurs mention his name, but he's done his thing. He's WBA mandatory and um, he showed a lot in that fight. So shout out to him. And hopefully uh, he gets a shot to, you know, get a chance to show what he can do at, at the top level against a guy like uh, Takuma Inoue for the title and make some good money for himself and just you know, be a factor in the sport. But uh, let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think about this fight? And uh, what do you think about Antonio Vargas' chances against Takuma Inouye for the world title now that he's mandatory? Leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dang. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure to subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.